The world is about to witness a famine on a scale not seen for decades unless urgent action is taken. It's in Yemen. For the past two weeks, a US and UK-backed Saudi coalition has sealed off parts of Yemen held by opposition rebels. More than 20 million people are trapped there without adequate food and medicine. Seven million of them were already on the brink of famine. Saudi Arabia has blocked access for journalists, but the ABC's producer in Sana, Muhi al Din Fuad, managed to film these images for 7.30. His Middle East correspondent, Sophie McNeil. <laughs> The Saudi-led coalition is using food as a weapon of war in Yemen. The country's children are starving to death. 150,000 will die before the end of the year because of the, the impact of this, uh, this blockade. This is a man-made crisis. I mean, it's not, uh, it's not organic or natural. It's not something that just happened overnight. It was obviously planned. I'm feeling like we're running out of words. There's only so many times the humanitarian community can say this is a catastrophe, this is an outrage. Three-year-old Mohammed was brought to Al Sabin Hospital in the Yemeni capital Sana on the weekend. My son had to take so many medical examinations, I couldn't afford it. And then his health condition worsened, so I brought him to hospital. We discovered that about more than 50% with uh, moderate malnutrition and uh, uh, about 25% with severe malnutrition. Uh, as a total, most of, uh, uh, more than 90, like 90% of kids uh, coming with severe man with malnutrition. For nearly three years, Saudi Arabia and its allies have been fighting opposition rebels called the Houthis. They're trying to restore the government of President Mansour Hadi, who was overthrown by the rebels. Both sides have been accused of war crimes. The Iranian-aligned Houthis control the Yemeni capital, Sana'a, and a large swathe of the country. More than 20 million people live under their control. For years, the Saudis and their allies have been restricting access to Houthi areas closing Yemen's main airport last August and preventing aid and food shipments into the country. Seven million people in Yemen are now on the brink of famine. We talk about these numbers that, that may not mean much to people, but it, it really is 21 million people who need aid or protection to survive. Two weeks ago, Houthi rebels fired a ballistic missile towards Riyadh airport in Saudi Arabia. The Saudi coalition retaliated, closing Yemen's main seaport and stopping all UN humanitarian flights in and out of the country. We're really going to struggle to keep people alive and, uh, and that's without the, the blockade. But with the blockade, it's going to be even, even more difficult. Jamie McGoldrick is the top UN official in Yemen. He's currently stuck outside the country with no way back in. The humanitarian situation is going to get more catastrophic. And then you put on uh, shocks like a blockade that just basically tips things into a very difficult, more difficult situation if it's possible. The closure of Yemen's main port at Hudaydah was a game changer. It stopped the flow of food to approximately 75% of Yemen's population. The UN says the move has the potential to kill millions. There will be a famine in Yemen. It will not be like the famine that we saw in South Sudan earlier in the year where tens of thousands of people were affected. It will not be like the famine which cost 250,000 people their lives in Somalia in 2011. It will be the largest famine the world has seen for many decades. But 12 days after this desperate plea, Hudaydah Port so remains closed. We are seeing figures put out this week that 130 children a day are dying of preventable causes and starvation. To go from other Australian Norwegian. aid worker Suze Van Meegen has been working in Yemen for the Norwegian Refugee Council. 
She's also trapped outside, waiting for UN flights to reopen. We have 400,000 metric tonnes of food, fuel and medicine waiting outside Yemen's borders on 29 ships. We are ready to go and we're not being allowed in. Um, this is outrageous for us and it's also disgusting for the people of Yemen that will die as a result. Saudi Arabia says the tight new measures are to stop Iran smuggling weapons to the rebels. The traitorous ballistic missile that was fired on the capital of my nation reflects the constant Iranian hostility against the kingdom. The current framework used by the Saudi-led coalition to impose a blockade on Yemen is by using the UN Security Council resolution. The blockade may prevent arms coming in into Yemen. However, there's a specific provision inside the resolution which says that humanitarian assistance and aid cannot be impeded from coming into the country. The UN says safeguards were already in place to ensure aid ships were not used to smuggle arms. The UN inspection mechanism, which has been up and running for over a year, there hasn't been any incidents as far as I gather. The Saudi-led coalition war effort has been supported by the US and the UK. Both have also made billions selling the kingdom arms. Today at a lunch in Canberra, the chairman of weapons makers BAE defended the sales when questioned by the ABC. We should be clear, you know, that part of the world is complicated. It is easy to form a remote judgment, but when under threat, one has to protect oneself and one's people. Australia has also been doing defence deals with the Saudis. In the past 12 months, the Australian Department of Defence has approved four different military licences to Saudi Arabia. The Department of Defence routinely refuses to reveal what those licences are for. We don't disclose the particular types of equipment and uh, mainly from a commercial and confidence perspective to protect those businesses. Has the department assessed whether any, uh, any, any previously supplied Australian equipment has been used by the Saudi-led coalition in unlawful attacks on, on Yemen? Uh, we oh. are unaware of any equipment or um, things that have received export permits being used in such a way. We're also calling on Australia to fully disclose all weapon sales and transfer details and deals they've made with the Saudi-led coalition and make public what are the end-user agreements for the use of these weapons. And last week, the Defence Minister was questioned over an Australian Navy training exercise with the Saudi Navy in the Red Sea in August. The government defended the exercise, calling it opportunistic, insisting it had nothing to do with the blockade. What Australia has done is to urge all those involved in Yemen to end the conflict to end the conflict and to return to UN-led negotiations aiming for a permanent end to the hostilities. Today, the Red Cross said that five cities in Yemen have now run out of clean water. We're sitting probably two to three weeks supply of fuel for the water truck delivery, for the pumping of water, clean water to prevent cholera. And if it runs out, then the tragedy just gets exacerbated to a level that we, we can't even imagine what it looks like. There is real fear a cholera epidemic will break out again in Yemen, while new strains of disease are already emerging. There is a new epidemic, a disease called diphtheria. This diphtheria is uh, an, a bacterial infection uh, affecting the uh, throat of the baby and making, uh, forming a thick membrane attached to the throat, uh, closing the air and baby cannot breathe, cannot uh, swallow. We don't know what it will take to get people to pay attention to Yemen. Until you can raise public awareness, unless you can get them asking the politicians and their members of parliament, why are you letting this happen? Why have we seen this and nothing's been said? And uh, I think, you know, that there's a time when nations have to stand up and be counted because they do know this is happening. Sophie McNeil with that report.